Okay, in this uh, video we're going to look at um, par partial fraction decomposition as a uh, technique uh, for helping us uh, integrate. And uh, so for the setup, we're going to always need to factor out the uh, denominator. And the denominators that we'll see will either factor into linears or quadratics. So the linear uh, factors um, will have a over that first linear factor, ax plus b. If it appears a second time, so maybe we have ax plus b squared, then we would need a1 divided by ax plus b plus a2 over ax plus b squared. And let's say that that linear factor appears m times when we factor the denominator, then we'll have to keep going all the way to am divided by ax plus b to the m power. Now let's say we have a quadratic factor, and it's going to be real similar to the linear, it's just we'll have two things upstairs. So we'll have a b1x plus c1, and that's going to be over our quadratic factor ax squared plus bx plus c, and uh, we couldn't factor that quadratic uh, factor any further. Um, and let's say it appears a second time, so we'd have square, so we'd have b2x plus c2 all over ax squared plus bx plus c to the second power. Now let's say when we factor we actually have the ax squared plus bx plus c appears m times so we'd have to keep going all the way to bmx plus cm divided by ax squared plus bx plus c all raised to the m power. So we probably won't have too many problems that have more than a uh, factor that's squared, but it certainly uh, is possible. So we're going to do two examples here. Let's say we want to break down x plus 2 over x squared plus 5x. So the first thing we're going to need to do is factor that denominator. So you have x plus 2 times x, x plus 5. So my two factors are x and x plus 5. They're both linear and they're both to the first power, so we'll just need um, an a over x and a b over x plus 5. And uh, we just have to figure out what value in a and b is going to make this um, uh, true. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this portion here and we're going to multiply everything by x, x plus 5 to clear the fractions. So what we'll have on the left hand side is x plus 2. On the right hand side we'll have a times x plus 5 plus b times x. So we'll have x plus 2 equals a times x plus 5 plus b times x. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick certain values for x um, so that um, we can find the a and the b. So if I let x equal 0, the left-hand side is going to be 2. The right-hand side is going to be 0 plus uh, 5, which is 5 times a. So I'll give us 5a. And then the bx is going to be 0. We'll divide both sides by uh, 5, and we'll get a is equal to 2 fifths. Okay, so that's one of the coefficients. Now the second one, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a value that's going to maybe make the factor uh, attached to the a zero. So we're going to pick negative 5. So we're going to let x equal negative 5. And uh, 2 plus negative 5 is negative 3. And that's going to equal b times negative 5 because the a term is has dropped out because the, the negative 5 uh, gives negative 5 plus 5 times 0 is 0. Okay, so we'll divide both sides by negative 5, and we'll get the b is equal to 3 fifths. So then we can go ahead and rewrite um, x plus 2 over x squared plus 5x is going to be equal to 2 fifths x plus 3 fifths uh, x plus 5, and that's the partial fraction decomposition there. Now if you wanted to, you could go ahead and um, find common denominator here, which would require us to multiply the first one by 2x plus 5. So if I did that, um, we'd have 2 and then uh, x plus 5 all over 5x um, x plus 5. 
and then the second one we would need to multiply by just an x, so then we'd have 3x over 5x, x plus 5. So when I add those, I'm going to have 5x plus 10 over 5x, x plus 5. We can divide everything by 5, and that will give us x plus 2 over x, x plus 5. And you can see that that decomposition does, in fact, work. It does uh, um, show that those are equal. Now, what we're going to be using them is to break them down so that we can integrate. And um, so if it's to the first power, like both of these are, they're going to be natural logs when I integrate them. All right, so we might want to integrate x plus 2 over x squared plus 5x. And we'll use our partial fraction decomposition, which said we have 2 over 5 times x dx plus the integral of 3 over 5 x plus 5 from our decomposition using partial fractions. Okay, If I want to, I can pull out those constants of 2 fifths so that we have dx over x. That's antiderivative is going to be natural log absolute value of x plus 3 fifths. And then we have dx over x plus 5. And the antiderivative of that will be natural log absolute value of x plus 5. Okay, so we're going to have the constant 2 fifths times natural log absolute value of x plus constant of 3 fifths times natural log absolute value of x plus 5 plus constant of integration. Okay, um, we're going to do another example of partial fraction decomposition and we'll actually have a linear term that appears twice. So we'll see what that looks like. So this time we're going to have x minus 1 over x squared times x plus 1. Okay, so my factors are x and x plus 1. Those are both linear. You see how we have the x squared? That appears twice. So we're going to have first the linear factor, the first power. So we'll have a over x. And then that linear uh, power appears twice because we have the x squared. So we'll have b over x squared plus uh, c over the other linear term of x plus 1. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we need to find what the a, b, and c is. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this whole thing and we're going to clear the fraction. We're going to multiply it by x squared plus, uh, times x plus 1. So on the left hand side you'll have x minus 1. Then you'll have a times x, x plus 1 because the x will cancel one of the x's in the x squared plus b times x plus 1 because the x squareds cancel and then you'll have c times x squared because the x plus 1's will cancel when I uh, multiply everything by that LCM. So we'll have x minus 1 equals a times x, x plus 1 plus b times x plus 1 plus c times x squared and we're going to play the same game. We're going to pick values of x, which are going to make um, some of these uh, terms go away. So if I pick x equals 0, that's going to make the a and the c terms 0. So if x is equal to 0, um, 0 minus 1 is minus 1 on the left. And we'll have b um, times 0 plus 1, which is just b. So b is equal to negative 1. Now we'll pick another value of x that's going to make, for instance, the a and the b terms drop out, and that'd be x is equal to negative 1. So if x is equal to negative 1, well, if minus 1 minus 1, which is negative 2, equals c times negative 1 squared, which is just c. There we got c is negative 2. And then the last thing we want to do is... Um, probably just pick a value for x that's small, like we'll pick the number 1 for instance. So if x is equal to 1, the left hand side 1 minus 1 is 0, and then we'll have um, a times 1 times 2, which is 2a. The b is negative 1, and uh, 1 plus 1 is going to be 2, so we'll have minus 2, plus c times uh, 1 squared, which is just the c, and c was negative 2. So we have 2a minus 2 minus 2 is equal to 0, so the a must be uh, 2. So putting that all together, 
x minus 1 over x squared times x plus 1 is equal to 2 over x plus negative 1 over x squared plus negative 2 over x plus 1. Now if we wanted to we could uh, get a common denominator here and we would end up seeing that these are in fact equivalent. So let's go ahead and uh, integrate uh, this. So the first let's see I inadvertently paused it here um, so the first term and the last term are both to the first power so that's going to be uh, natural log so the first term will be 2 natural log absolute value of x the next term the one in the middle there that is a uh, power rule so you have negative 1 x to the minus 2 so we would add 1 to the exponent which would make this a minus 1 and then we would divide by um, our new exponent and uh, so that will give us 1 over x for that middle term and then the last one will be uh, minus 2 uh, absolute value uh, minus 2 natural log absolute value of x plus 1 okay so we do the integral x minus 1 over uh, x squared x plus 1 okay using our partial fractions that's 2 over x dx minus 1 over x squared dx minus 2 x plus 1 dx so the first one is going to be 2 natural log absolute value of x plus 1 over x using the power rule minus 2 absolute value or natural log absolute value of x plus 1 plus constant integration okay and um, sometimes the um, the partial fractions will get a little bit trickier but the this is essentially the strategy that will follow to do uh, partial fractions and it just takes a, like most things in math just takes some practice <laughs>